Good morning guys, Wandering Beast here, and I want to kind of help answer a couple of questions that I've been getting. One with the bus update, I've been getting a little bit more of the lithium questions. I've also been selling them locally, um, and that has spawned a lot of questions. So, uh, I don't want to bore you guys to death because I've the, the clip I will show you, I recorded last year when I was doing my full-on test of lithium, what's possible. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is make sure that all the videos are in my Adventure Bus Build playlist. i uh, put a link somewhere up here. Go check those out. We got our cells in. We top balanced them. We fully charged them. Now, when you charge lithium, you've got to have a charger that does allow a lithium profile that knows that it's charging a lithium battery. You can't just use a regular charger. And so in my search for that, I tried out NOCO. You guys know I love their jump starter. However, I've had issues with them. They've had good customer service. They've gotten back to me and they've always fixed the problem. Now, I bought a NOCO new gen X4 something. And what I really liked about the NOCO is they allowed multiple profiles for each output. And so I could put one battery that was a lead acid, my starter batteries, on lead acid mode and on my house batteries in lithium mode. But the problem was the lithiums couldn't make it up past 13 point whatever volts. And if you've been researching lithiums, you know that they stay at a very high voltage and then right at the end they crash. So you get all that capacity. Where with the lead acid, you kind of start slowing down early and it has this very general curve that goes down. So the voltages and what you can do and what's possible with them are totally different things. So lithiums need to have the proper voltage and they go like a racehorse until the end and then they collapse. So the NOCO wasn't working. I wasn't getting high enough voltage. I talked to the company, they said, yes, I think you've got a defective unit. And in the meantime, while they were figuring that all out, I said, screw it, and I went with Victron and hopped on Amazon, I got one of their 30 amp. The other thing is if you're looking at cells like that I'm building that are 270 amp hour or 560 combined, you're gonna need some power, some horsepower to charge that. Your little four amp and smaller are gonna take forever. Even in a 30 amp, this is kind of the middle ground. I wouldn't go anything less than a 30 amp battery charger. Now this is a Victron. This has three outputs, however you cannot change the profile for each one. This is a smart charger and you can through the app or the button on the front changes from a lithium ion to regular lead acid battery and it's got some really cool features. Check this out if you're thinking about getting a battery charger. The problem is I, I can't hook it up to my starter battery and my house battery. I leave it unplugged. In fact, I've got a small little dog tail here out with a 10 gauge, I believe it is. Um, and some decent little clamps. And so when I need to charge my truck, I charge my truck. When I charge house batteries, I charge the house batteries. And I just leave it as a portable charger. I don't have anything currently permanently installed to charge off of house outlet. So with that all being said, what happens when you're in the middle of nowhere and your truck won't start? Well, you carry your jump starter, right? The NOCO amazing $300 charger but your batteries are three or four years old now and they're getting a little tired and you're looking at maybe replacing them under the warranty before the four years is up that's where we're at right now the odysseys are getting a little tired so the clip you're going to see is me coming out to start my bus luckily i was in my driveway not in the middle of nowhere and it was like at six volts or something it was very low I've got a parasitic draw that I was unaware of because of a uh, amplifier base that I installed. So it was a little low. So out comes a jump starter. Put on the jump starter. Ruh, ruh, ruh. Not going to do it. So what is possible with lithium batteries? When your house batteries still have a good amount of charge, when the prices of lithium cells and building your cells allows me to have 560 amp hours, well, I get out my house charger and my extension cord and we do just like I did with the 1000 watt engine block heater and I go plug this in and I go find something to do. I pack up camp, I go back in the house. Luckily, like I said, this was in the driveway, but what happens if it happens in the back country? Well, I run the extension cord, I get the house batteries and I charge them. The only other way to do that nowadays is to go break out your 
generator, right? Hopefully you carry a Honda 2000 with you, and hopefully that has enough power to power some sort of mobile charger. Some of those do have a trickle charger uh, effect on there. I'm not planning on carrying any sort of portable generator. Um, because of lithium, I can then do that. So let's watch the clip. So even the uh, Genius Boost Pro GB150 is not giving me enough. I've done the glow plugs a couple times. We're down to 9 volts. And she just doesn't have enough to crank. Nope, not enough. Alright, got the Victron 30 amp out to an extension cord, dog, and up to the Renji 2000. I was going to pull this up here and just see what kind of amp draw we're getting. 133 amp hours. Let's flip that magic switch. There we go, 17. So it is. 11.20 let's give this a little while to charge the batteries and see if we can't start the truck this way alright 11.48 and we're currently down to 1.24 still charging away Spectron says we're up to 14 let's see what happens when we turn the key we give it a couple glow plug cycles here Well, that's it. Uh, truck starts, truck works, batteries charged, mission accomplished. You get to head home and not try to find self-service and go get a tow truck. Um, jump box wasn't pulling it. And I think it's just because the Odysseys have been through a lot. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to go up to Ben Battery Systems uh, this week and uh, see if we can load test them and see if I can't get them replaced under warranty since they are under four years. Fingers crossed, otherwise it's another thousand dollars in batteries if I want to go with Odyssey. So that's where we're at, guys. Want to let you guys know the Victron and the apps and everything, they're just as good as everyone says they are. There's a reason you look through Instagram, you look through professional installate installers, and there's a lot of blue boxes in those because they work, they work well. I really wish I could change the profile for each one, and that way I could have one plug charge my house batteries, charge my other batteries, trickle charge. Go look at the, the website. These have an amazing capacity to know that you are in storage mode. It will not sit there, if you guys realize how normal charges work, it ramps up, it gets a lot of voltage, and then it starts detecting, okay, you're good. It starts absorbing, all your batteries are good. Now it starts dipping down, now it goes into float mode, and it just wants to keep it there. The problem is, what happens if you keep a battery at a very high voltage for floating for a very long time you're going to effectively you can wreck that battery that's why trickle charges are like a half amp a one amp just barely trickling some in there so when you have these powerful chargers you need to have something like the victron that knows it recognizes storage mode and it will drop down to like 13 volts and do that for a while so it's not just pounding the battery uh, ridiculously for life on end so with something like this you could leave this plugged in and just let it go. The other really neat feature of this is this actually you go into expert mode you can create this as a 12 volt power supply so if the power that you are working on in your bus or your van uh, doesn't exceed the 30 amps you could effectively plug that in turn that in there and not use any of your house batteries and use it as a shore power but not have to run your inverter everything 12 volt will run up to 30 amps up this i've used it in the garage for a lot of testing projects when i just need 12 volts and screwing around with stuff and it's been really cool um, i'll put links down below to everything guys wonder beast hope that answers a lot more questions and uh doesn't create more but if you have them pm me leave a comment hit me up on instagram We'll see you down the road, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the love and support. You guys are amazing. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the adventure on social media, and we'll see you on the road.